I don't think anything in life is a problem. I think everything is a challenge defined by the constraints associated with it. And as you can tell from my accent, I'm not necessarily originally from London or Europe. I grew up in Toronto, Canada, which is currently where I am in the world. Um, as I quote unquote fled London when the situation got worse in Canada, thankfully. I went to school here, both in terms of you know, high school, university, college, undergraduate, graduate studies. And then I moved out to Bay Area slash Silicon Valley, as it's also called, quote unquote, the Mecca of tech. I started off as a computer software engineer. So basically people that, you know, go and code and build the programs and applications that, you know, you're using Zoom, you know, that's built uh, ultimately by a software developer to all the wonderful applications that you see on your mobile phone and everything that you use. Um, and then ultimately, my role started to grow and what I started to do is more than just engineering in terms of the product side of like not just ultimately building the software, but thinking about the products and the projects that we need to be building and how do they make sense given a particular business and the constraints that they may have. So does it make sense for us to build this product or this feature? I think I was very studious, quote unquote studious, where I thought that academic learning is the best way to success. Um, career success was very important to me, which it still is. For me, like I, maybe because I was just lacking that information, I thought figuring out which university I go to and which program I go to, that weighed very heavily on me because I then thought that then impacts ultimately the access that you have in terms of like the career. And I, I do think that is important because unfortunately those networking situation and uh, unfortunately those branding, those things do help. Uh, but I think I was stressing over it quite a bit much. And if anything, I would kind of like tell my past self that I shouldn't necessarily have had to do that. I remember I was talking to everybody in our family, friends, network to try to figure out which is a good school to go to and any advice that they could give me. But yeah, a lot of my focus was, to be honest, was just purely on the academic side um, and possibly not a good thing, but not so much even on the personal side type of thing, purely because I was focused so much in terms of my career. The space that I am, the tech space, as well as many of the other traditional industries, not that tech is a traditional industry, uh, finance is an example, tend to be extremely male driven. So it can be a bit of a challenging, and I say bit lightly, uh, and a juxtaposition position um, to be not only a female, but to be somebody from a um, minority background uh, or a less known background than what you might see usually to be in these particular areas. You know, there's countless examples that I'm sure that I, as well as any other uh, person from a less privileged background or more of a minority background can probably share about the challenges that they had to go through, not just in the technical industry, but also in some of the other um, male-dominated industries as well, too, you know, things including anywhere from the not-so-great of literally some kind of like swearing or being not looked upon for certain opportunities, which then ultimately goes into your growth and the uh, promotions and the titles and the compensation that you get to just overall kind of day-to-day -day interaction of how you actually feel involved there. The way I look at it is that I don't think anything in life is a problem. I think everything is a challenge defined by the constraints associated with it. Even when I was in school and, and some of the math courses that I was taking that were optional, I used to be the only girl there. Um, in university, when I was taking some of these computer uh, operating systems and networking courses, you know, I'd be sitting in lecture halls with 200 people and maximum it would either be me or maybe one or two other female. And even in terms of kind of like, you know, um, ethnic racial background, but I think the bigger stuff is also socioeconomic background, um, you know, sometimes 
because you might very much be the only outlier there. But I think it's all about trying to create opportunity as much as possible and trying to educate those people. Having said that, I'm also probably coming from a much, much more privileged background than, you know, billions of other people out there. Um, And I think a lot of this stuff, if you can find it, find great people to surround yourself by. And ultimately, if you're able to kind of more so get that advocacy as opposed to that mentorship from those people that are actually aware of these problems and can help create these solutions. I think that's extremely important. Um, With regards to technical skills, I think having a good, solid, um, back-end, strongly typed language, so particularly, say, if you can do Java or even C Sharp or C++, uh, Golang, which is uh, Google's version of um, kind of like a backend language, which is quite similar to Java as well. I think that's good too. You could do Python as well, but I think those strongly typed languages are much better. And if you start off from that extremely strong base of good design engineering principles and a harder language to start off with, then a more um, easier languages, which tend to be on the front end, will be much easier for you to come by having exposure to some sort of kind of like machine learning, be it in terms of textual analysis, which is NLP, natural language processing, or even in terms of the image translation side of things. um, I think those would be super helpful. I think when you're young and early in your career, it's the technical skills. Focus more so also on the cultural skills. I think being ambitious, but not like stab somebody in the back type of thing, What I mentioned about networking, seeking out opportunities, taking initiatives, those negotiation side of things, I think those, to me at least, and having that growth mindset and always wanting to learn and improve, when I'm hiring people and how I like to go about when I was starting off as well too, to me, those are more important than the technical skill set because I think technical skills is something that you can very quickly pick up. I think the networking aspect, which I mentioned, and I think I still need to improve upon, I think all of us generally do, is possibly maybe I should have done more of that. Um, And I kind of lament on that, both in terms of when I was 17 or even when I was early on in my career. Like I was working in Silicon Valley with some of the best leaders and I've made some of those great connections, but I actually do think I could have done so much more. It could have created more opportunities for myself. I think the other stuff that I've been doing a lot more, um, you know, some Uh, after some time in my career um, is think about kind of the future and projecting that. So where do I want to be in the next five years? It's hard to do, I think, maybe 10 years or forward, but that's the thing that I would have maybe also changed a little bit at 17 versus I was just thinking, oh, I just need to get into a good university and program, and then everything from there on can actually be forward. So I would have liked to have thought if I thought a little bit more after I graduate, what does that look like? And then the five years from there, where do I need to be and what should I be doing right now to help get there that I may not be doing?